Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, uh, please subscribe. My name is Tom and I'm a dating coach. So if you guys have any questions or if you guys are lost or confused in life about dating and relationships, I'm your guy. But yes, no further ado, these are my 10 signs that you guys might not be ready for a relationship. But first off, I just wanna state one thing. I just wanna say that the most beautiful relationships come to you when you least expect it. And the love of your life will walk into your life unexpectedly. And it's just the fact of life. The greatest things happen in life unexpectedly. So anyways, let's move on to number one. Emotional availability. Now, have you guys ever heard of manifesting? Okay. I wouldn't say that I'm right into it, but I do believe who you are is who you attract. And dating isn't black and white. Do you find yourself struggling with intimacy, lack of connection, commitment? These are key factors you have to consider when wanting to build a relationship. And if you find yourself struggling with any of these things, these little things, it's okay to step back and work on yourself. Which brings me to number two, self-awareness. Do you have a good understanding of yourself? Do you know your morals and values? More importantly, do you know what you're looking for in a partner? Now, this is kind of important because if you just started seeing someone and you're seeing a new person and it's kind of turning out to be a rebound, that's also not a healthy start to the relationship. Because if you go into a relationship with any emotions like bitterness, angriness, uh, maybe opinionated or judgmental, just not in a healthy mind frame, there's just gonna be a lot of negative potential effects with this relationship and moving forward. You need to have a happy, healthy outlook when it comes to dating. And you need to be aware of that because like I said earlier, you are who you attract. Which brings me to number three. Have you healed from your past relationship? And I'm talking, this could be anyone from one week to two weeks, a month, three years, X, Y, Z, all the above. Are you moved on from the person you last saw? There's this one thing that goes, instant gratification comes poor decisions every time. See, when you move on from these past relationships, you need to process all of the good and all of the bad. You need to mentally put it in your head that whatever happened, happened, and that's good or bad, but that's the point. You need to accept bad things happen, but so do good things. What are the positive things you took away from it? What are the bad things you took away from it? What did you learn? Where are you today? How are you better today? Because you don't wanna go into your next relationship, and maybe so, this might be the one, but you don't wanna put any of that emotional baggage or wounds onto this person. Because there could be a lot of unresolved issues that you're still dealing with. And like I said, you need time to process these things. They're very important of moving forward and learning from the good and the bad. See, independence is very important in this stage because you need to learn how to be by yourself. You need to learn how to not be around anybody. You need to learn how to just sit in your bed, watch a movie, do something that's productive, do something that's positive, do something that's healthy to show that you are an independent person. Because with independence, you're learning to self-reflect on yourself. And if you don't self-reflect, if you don't have a night where you just do nothing or depress, from your day or from what happened, you're not gonna learn. Why did this go wrong? How did this go wrong? What did I do wrong? What did they do wrong? What went right? Number four, clear communication. Now in the early stages of dating, can you have a communication with someone and not play games with them? Can you express your feelings, your thoughts, your needs and efficiency? to this person? Are you willing to put in the work? Because 
I've said this before and I'll say it again. Relationships are a two-way street, okay? One person cannot make it work. The other person cannot make it work, okay? Two people need to make it work. That's how it will work, okay? You need to be willing to be open-minded, listen, collaborate, and respect each other moving forward. Number five, establishing boundaries. You know your own limits and you're willing to communicate and enforce them in a relationship. Do you know your communication boundaries? Do you know your personal space boundaries? Do you know your emotional boundaries? Do you know your social boundaries? Do you know your financial boundaries? Do you know your intimacy boundaries? Do you know your work-life balance boundaries? Do you know your technology and privacy boundaries? Do you know your family boundaries? And finally, do you know your goal setting boundaries? Just remember, the key to setting boundaries, communication and mutual understanding. It's important to discuss and agree on boundaries together. But over time, as the relationship progresses, healthy boundaries contribute a strong foundation for trust, respect, and overall relationship well-being. Which leads me to number six, willing to compromise. You have to understand that relationships are a give and take, and you have to be open to agreeable solutions to conflict. Are you finding yourself choosing activities? Are you willing to spend time with this person? What is your communication style? What about meeting friends and family? How good is your decision making? And what do you like with your personal space or hobbies and interests? or celebrating that special occasion. Maybe having financial decisions. And more importantly, what's the long-term plans? Number seven, a positive outlook. Now I kind of mentioned this in one, but this is more in detail. You have to approach a relationship in a positive outlook to know if this relationship is going to be good moving forward? Is it going to have the potential to grow and find happiness together? Like, are you willing to go meet people, build connections, learning from experiences, discovering shared values? Are you willing to have that fun and enjoyment in life? Are you willing to build confidence? Are you open to possibilities? And finally, are you going to appreciate different perspectives? But you can't go into something and have this negative outlook or a lot of self issues in yourself if you know you have things to work on. Like if you're finding yourself in a dark place or a rhetoric against men or women, then I would say you're probably not ready for relationship. Number eight, healthy lifestyle. Now I feel like this one's pretty obvious because you wanna be the best version of yourself. Fun fact, it actually shows that people who exercise are 10% more happier. But you're taking care of your physical, your emotional, your good over well-being, and you're not seeking a relationship just to fill a void. And you wanna work out because it's the good thing to do. You wanna look good. You wanna feel good. It's not just gonna make you look good, it's gonna make you feel good. It's gonna give you confidence. And I don't want anyone telling me that I don't have time. You have 24 hours in a day, okay? Let's say you sleep for 10 hours, okay? You still have 14 hours to do some exercise. So stop lying to yourself and go to the gym. Number nine, the desire to connect. Now, <laughs> people get this really mixed up and it's funny because, you know, when we find someone, we get so caught up in just how amazing they are, but you don't really know this person. So how can they be amazing? Like people can have good chemistry, but can you truly connect with this person? And I mean like on a deeper level, like can you guys connect or can you find yourself connecting, sharing experiences on a genuine level? and supporting this person with 
your goals and your inspirations. You need to be mentally checked in for these kind of things to have a healthy, good relationship. Because if you're not mentally connected with anyone or yourself, you're gonna find yourself in a lot of trouble and it might be not the best relationship moving forward. Which brings me to number 10 and final. Do you have a stable life situation? It is important to have a relatively stable, balanced life with manageable stressors and responsibilities. But do you have financial stability, have emotional well-being, have good, clear communication? Do you have a healthy lifestyle? Do you have a good work-life balance? Do you have any personal growth and development that you spend on your spare time? Do you have a healthy, good living environment? Do you have plans and goals for the future? Do you have good conflict resolution skills? And are you reliable and are you a responsible person? More importantly, are you accountable? If you are, all these things, and you really considered that I check all these boxes, then I would say you are good for a future, healthy, happy relationship. But these are my top signs that you are ready for a relationship and you just haven't found the one yet. Sad face. But don't worry guys, there is time. You will find that special person. If you are these things, and you check all 10 boxes, they will be coming around the corner anytime soon. I promise you that. And who knows, maybe you're talking to that person right now. Life is a weird, unexpected roller coaster. But anyways, guys, I just wanna say thank you. If you stuck this past through the video, I really appreciate it, I, I really do. But more importantly, it's about you, not me. But thank you guys. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe. Give me some love. I do appreciate it. I am Tom, your dating coach, and I will see you on the next one, guys.